Hello friends. Hi, this is Dr. Vinaya Karangan. I'm the founder of Search Test and uh, I'm also a pediatric surgery resident. So it gives me a lot of happiness to welcome uh, Dr. Aditya Sri today. Aditya is rank 1 AML in uh, pediatric surgery INISS. And uh, though it's pediatric surgery, it's very special to me as well. So uh, Aditya, how does it feel to be on top? Hi, sir. Thanks for having me. So, very uh, unexpected feeling. <laughs> the exam was also, you know, after finishing my MRCS, I had I had, the, I had, a plan. I had a fixed plan that, you know, I'll go to the UK and I'll think about studying there. But again, it's too long and too tedious. So, last minute alteration in my plan and I was using your... Uh, so, I had used the uh, search test for MRCS party preparation. Because I was advised by my senior and uh, I really liked it. I passed a part A in the first attempt as well. So then uh, then INISS came up and a few friends of mine just told me, give the exam, give the exam. Started preparing, didn't prepare that as well as I should have. But your MCQ bank, I think, hands down is one of the best. A lot of my seniors told me about it as well that your success rate is really good. I mean, the kind of MCQs that you've got in your Q bank. It's very accurate, very similar to the questions in the exam. So I think that helped me a lot. And apart from that, I just stuck to Bailey and Sabiston. That's it. I just kept reading my notes, Bailey, Sabiston, and a lot of revision was important. And as soon as my result came, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I saw, I, I started, I have this mentality of start looking from down. I started looking from down, couldn't find my roll number. I started seeing again, then I started seeing from top when I said, my God, rank one. I couldn't believe it only. <laughs> great man, great man. So happy for you, buddy. Uh, so one very uh, pertinent question at this point of time, why pediatric surgery? So pediatric surgery, firstly, because uh, I had a lot of exposure to it in my residency. My uh, head of unit, Dr. Shiv Prasad Irgode, I was in that unit for a year. So it was just post-COVID. So lots of cases, lots of pending cases and I learned a lot. I felt that uh, pediatric surgery, because a lot of people will say that, you know, you get to operate from head to toe and this and that. But I feel that the joy that you get in treating a child and uh, curing his disease in that state and so that he can have a normal life for the, for the rest of his life, that in itself is extremely satisfying. So what pediatric surgeons can do, other people cannot. Like, you know, someone comes to you with a tracheoesophageal fistula, you repair it. And for the rest of his life, the child is complication free and is leading a normal life. So maybe the child will not remember you, but I'm sure the parents will be indebted to you. And that satisfaction and that uh, happiness that you get, that you know, you have done something so that someone is leading a normal life. Not many people in the world have the chance of doing this. And of Absolutely. course, again, children... Children have a fantastic physiology. Their healing process is amazing. You know, it's nothing compared to that of what we see in adults. So that again, I was more inclined. A lot of people told me, you know, why peat surgery? What's wrong with you? The difficult branch. No. Scope, the same this, that. Uh, but again, I it's feel that <laughs> I feel that it's up to the up to the surgeon as well. You know, if you're good, if you're good at what you do, if you've got a good hand, if you've got a good practice. If you have a good name, people will come to you however you are. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with you, Aditya. I think uh, one of the key things is that pediatric surgery is often a maligned specialty. But the reality agree, is slightly different. The reality is slightly different. The reality in reality, if you're good at, if you look at any specialty, the top 10% of surgeons are doing very well. Um, I agree, sir. I agree. And yes, there were certain challenges because of the insurance payouts for congenital mm -hmm. normally. But those issues are getting sorted out and absolutely, yeah, yeah. joy of... Uh, uh, operating on children is something very unique. So, yeah. So, uh, welcome to the specialty. Welcome to pediatric surgery. Thank you, thank you. So, glad to have you. Um, <laughs> Another message I would like to give uh, for whoever is watching this video is, uh, so my common merit list rank was 5, but uh, my AIMS merit list rank was 1. So, when I observed the merit list, I think I got the highest marks in the interview. So, that I would uh, give that aspect of mine to, you know, speaking very fluently speaking confidently in front of everyone so if people can build up on these skills it will help you later in life when you're growing when you're developing as a pediatric surgeon so i think these few points helped me in my interview and which is why my rank went from five to one 
in my theory i had got 51 on 80 but after my interview marks got added i got 67 on 100 which is why i got a rank of 1 makes sense so just a uh, uh, couple of questions are there before we wrap up this uh, uh, session uh, uh, what uh, topics did you concentrate for your pediatric surgery interview uh mostly sir uh, topics for the interview i had spoken to you before the interview you told me uh, tracheoesophageal fistula anorectal malformations i also read up on congenital diaphragmatic hernia puj obstructions posterior retral valves i read up i just went through it briefly and just a little bit basic about newborn physiology iv fluids and basic management and in my so my interview started with i was asked a general introduction about myself and uh, i made it a point to mention about my mrcs degree because i thought that might have some value and uh, then he asked me what what cases i've seen and i was given the option about what i would like to be asked about so i chose congenital diaphragmatic hernia i was just asked about the ba- basic anatomical basis and then sir asked me what i would do can this condition be diagnosed uh, prenatally antenatally as well so and after that there were a lot of questions on my thesis and bio statistics so i would urge everyone preparing for the interview that uh, just go through your thesis before the interview and try to be well versed with it you know if you are trying to bullshit them they know that you are trying to fool them and they are smart and they are at that level for a reason so you can't make a fool of them then they'll ask you leading questions and that will you're just digging your own grave then if you don't answer correctly absolutely ma'am absolutely i think it makes a lot of sense other than one last question where do you see yourself in years from Uh, to be honest sir uh, i have an interest in fetal surgery and uh, i find it really intriguing and very fascinating and i feel i would like to settle in mumbai in the long term and uh, i would also like to do a lot for the poor because i still feel in the rural areas not much awareness is there about pediatric surgery so sir i would like to do something in the long term where i could collaborate with a few government hospitals or work with them and just just provide my services and give back to the society what i have received from them sir absolutely hey thank you so much aditya i think this was a very interesting interview uh, thank thanks you, for being thank here today congratulations once again welcome to pediatric surgery all thank the very best thank you